Thank you very much for the introduction, Chris. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity to give a very brief introduction to the research that, that has been going on in my lab at Duke University for the past 21 years. So uh, as you can see from the title of my talk, uh, we study the plant immune mechanism. Uh, so before I uh, start, I would like to dedicate my talk to my family, uh, my mother, Liu Ai Nian, my husband, Wang Xiaofan, Professor Wang Xiaofan, who's in the audience somewhere, uh, and my late father, Dong Furong. Uh, this is a very old picture that I decided to uh, uh, use this picture to this uh, place that uh, in Beijing, where I grew up, and this landmark was still uh, is still there, and you can see at that time, I think it's about 20, 28 years ago, the sky is very blue, and uh, uh, this, this, this area that I live, uh, uh, at that time was the outskirts, well, the very edge of the, of the city, but now if you, see, uh, if you look at this landmark, it's in the almost at the center of the city. So the special tribute to my father, uh, who was a, a economist, but uh, he had the wisdom of realizing 30 years ago, it was 35 years ago that, that um, uh, biology would be the, the driving force for the major development of the economy. And uh, he recommended me to to become a biology student in college. He actually had the wisdom of buying this uh, book for me when I was a college student. So I, I read this book from cover to cover. So after this, I, I was completely sold uh, to, to, to uh, doing biological research. And in this book, for those of you who haven't read this, I think I, I still recommend this to you. Uh, there are many uh, pictures of of these pioneers in, in molecular genetics. And I look, I, I enjoy reading, looking at these pictures and, and, and they're almost like as if they're my rock stars. And, and uh, of course, even at that, well, at that time, I didn't really know any real rock stars. Uh, so so I, um, after graduating uh, from, from college, from Wuhan University, I came to this country, to Northwestern University, to study uh, under uh, Robert Rahn. So my research project was on uh, understanding the replication mechanisms of this plasma called R plasma. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with drug resistance, many of the drug resistant genes are encoded uh, by this very large plasma. So after I graduated, uh, received my PhD, I moved down to, to Mass General Hospital to study under Fred Alcibel to study immune mechanisms of plants. So when I was in college, I, I became very interested, uh, fascinated by, by immunology. Uh, but after a few um, lab, labs, uh, immunology labs, uh, sacrificing animals, I realized that, that my mind is, is in the right place, but my stomach is uh, very disagreeable. So I decided, I think it's really uh, nice to, to decide to work on uh, the immunology of, of plants because if you sacrifice plants, they will not bleed or scream. Uh, so, uh, and also at the time, we didn't really know very much about plant immunology. And if you ask people about immunology, you will think about antigen-antibody interactions. In fact, this kind of immune mechanism uh, is only present in jarred vertebrates. But all organisms should have some kind of immune mechanism uh, that enable them to survive in the environment. Okay? So as, as uh, this picture that I borrowed from Barbara Baker's review shows that, that plants are actually a potential uh, host for all uh, uh, types of microbial pathogens bacterial, fungal, viral, and even nematodes. So when well, I started in Fred Alcibel's lab, we started uh, using this model organism called Arabidopsis thaliana, which is a, a small weed. 
um, you can grow a very high number of Arabidopsis thaliana uh, on petri dishes or in small uh, growth chambers. Uh, so, and, and Arabidopsis thaliana is also the first prime genome uh, ever sequenced. So we hope, and we are still doing this, uh, that what we discovered uh, in Arabidopsis can be applied uh, to uh, economically uh, important plants such as rice. So after through the, uh, uh, the, the study, intense study uh, by many laboratories uh, around the world for the past 20 to 25 years, now we know that plants also have a both signal specific and block spectrum resistance mechanism. So if uh, a pathogenic, pathogenic signal is recognized by the plant, uh, the infected cells can undergo programmed cell death to sacrifice them to themselves to uh, inhibit the proliferation of the pathogen if uh, these pathogens uh, depend on the, the, the live whole cell for, uh, for, for growth. However, at the same time, this, uh, uh, this, this kind of a mechanism is very well controlled. Uh, in uninfected part of the plant, salicylic acid uh, is synthesized. A salicylic acid, as you can see, the structure is a very simple uh, phenolic compound. And its systemic transduction of this signal uh, is assisted by uh, several uh, compounds that have been uh, recently uh, identified. So salicylic acid then can activate the synthesis of these antimicrobial proteins that we call PR proteins. And the effect of these, uh, the collect, uh, uh, coordinate uh, induction of these uh, antimicrobial proteins then determines this broad spectrum resistance mechanism called uh, SAR or systemic acquired resistance. So in contrast to this local resistance mechanism, uh, SAR does not uh, involve cell death, but rather promotes cell survival. So as a biologist, if you look at this, it's actually a very interesting, uh, uh, um, uh, there are many interesting aspects to study, right? So one that interests me is uh, how uh, the, the cell state is determined. Uh, what cells is, will undergo cell death and what cells will uh, survive? So uh, first, I want to uh, introduce to you very briefly the, the signal-specific recognition uh, that, that uh, triggers program cell death. As you can see, that we have identified uh, many uh, such uh, receptors that can recognize specific signals. Interestingly, uh, after you compare uh, the six structures of these receptors to the receptor immune receptors in in, in insects and in mammals, uh, they have very similar structure. In, but they are not really evolutionarily uh, related. They are actually uh, arose through convergent uh, evolution. So um, and in, in each plant genome, uh, each plant genome encodes hundreds of these uh, receptors. And they are uh, normally present in these clusters, so they recombine with much higher frequency to generate new specificity. As you can see here, it's the combination of these hundreds of receptors that determines the innate immune um, uh, spectrum of this organism. So as shown uh, by this slide, this uh, photograph I borrowed from my former postdoc, Jin Qi Song, is that uh, if you have a, a plant that has this specific immune receptor as shown uh, in these uh, uh, potato plants that has the immune receptor for this uh, disease called, uh, for this pathogen Phytophthora, Phytophthora infection, which is the causative agent of potato laid flies. So some of you may know that this is the disease that caused the infamous uh, Irish potato famine uh, in 18, uh, 1840s uh, that caused massive immigration uh, from Ireland to the U.S. And, and other countries. So as you can see that a single gene 
uh, in this uh, potato plant can make a huge difference. So the front uh, uh, plant, the plants in the front row uh, uh, survive this disease, and the ones on the back are completely wiped out uh, by the same disease. So, but this kind of uh, local uh, 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 localized cell death has to be uh, very well controlled, and we believe that this uh, this is shown uh, a more uh, uh, obvious, uh, very clearly by this uh, uh, tobacco plant that uh, recognize a, a virus called TMV, tobacco mosaic virus. You can see that each uh, infection site has this very well defined uh, cell death zone, okay? But the rest of the plant is actually um, virus free. So when you look at the, these uh, lesions, we found uh, uh, in these lesions a uh, gradient of salicylic acid is synthesized. We hypothesize it is this uh, salicylic acid gradient you see around the lesion that determines which cells will undergo cell death and which cells will uh, uh, survive. So my laboratory performed a, a genetic screen to look for genes that are required for salicylic acid-induced resistance. We found a mutant called MTR1. So from this name, you know that what kind of radio station we'd like to listen to. So, so we can, uh, you can see that if we treat the wild type Arabidopsis plant with salicylic acid or the synthetic uh, compound INA uh, prior to in, uh, infection by this uh, bacterial pathogen Pseudomonas syringae, we get a uh, very significant uh, increase uh, resistance to this pathogen. However, if we knock out this uh, gene MTR1, in the same genetic background, uh, you will see uh, the treatment of salicylic acid or INA had very little effect on uh, resistance. So, so this uh, told us that salic uh, MTR1 uh, is uh, required, is a positive regulator uh, uh, required for salicylic acid-induced uh, resistance. So recently, uh, we uh, found that uh, the effect of salicylic acid is, is to uh, control the stability of MTR1 protein. As shown here uh, in this blue, uh, you can see blue dots surrounding this infection site uh, representing the accumulation of MTR1 protein. So MTR1 protein accumulates uh, surround, uh, in the surrounding cells of the infection site to inhibit programmed cell death and enhance uh, cell survival uh, and, and induction of this nonspecific immune, uh, immunity against infection. So we uh, further demonstrated that this uh, uh, regulation is actually, this, this gradient of salicylic acid is actually uh, controlled, uh, uh, is sensed uh, by the receptor proteins, MTR3 and, and MTR4. Uh, these proteins have differential affinity uh, to salicylic acid, and these proteins are adapter proteins that are control this, the degradation of MTR1. So, so as a result of this, so inside the lesion, that MTR1 protein uh, 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 level is low, that allows the, the, the cell death to go forward to confer local resistance. But in the surrounding, uh, in the cells surrounding the lesion, uh, MTR1 accumulates, as I showed you earlier, uh, to prevent the spread of the, uh, the, the cell death and also enhances systemic acquired resistance. So this study of MTR1 in Arabidopsis, uh, what we discovered in Arabidopsis has been applied to uh, multiple uh, crop plants, uh, for example, rice. So, as this picture shows that uh, when we transform uh, MTR1, the Arabidopsis MTR1, into rice, which uh, variety, this type A uh, 309, is susceptible to this, originally susceptible to rice bacterial blight. But when we overexpress Arabidopsis MTR1 uh, in, the, uh, in this uh, susceptible rice plant, 
uh, it confers uh, enhanced resistance to this uh, devastating disease. And this has been done in several other uh, 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 crop plants like tobacco, apple, uh, wheat, uh, tomato, and citrus, and etc. Uh, but this is a pretty a simple-minded approach, right? Uh, it, 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 it actually has some uh, drawbacks. As you can see, some of the transgenic lines uh, have hypersensitivity to abiotic, abiotic stresses, even though they have uh, enhanced resistance to biotic stress. And some are uh, hypersensitive to light. So we still have a lot of work to do that will uh, allow us to separate the good part of this uh, protein function from the detrimental effects of the protein function. So our study in, in plants uh, can directly benefit agriculture. I think uh, so some of our studies actually can benefit, have much broader impact. For example, salicylic acid is the active ingredient of aspirin. So aspirin, uh, the salicylic acid, uh, was first discovered uh, in uh, willow tree barks. As I already told you, it's a, a sun signal, but it was discovered probably uh, a long time ago uh, in, in hip, uh, hypocrite uh, time uh, that, that, that um, uh, to use uh, uh, the, the, the extract uh, for pain relief and also uh, fever reduction. However, this, this very old drug now has very uh, many new applications. Uh, you heard in the news that, that long-term use of, of uh, baby aspirin actually have very significant effects on uh, reduction of heart attack and, and, and tens, uh, death of certain type of cancer like colon cancer. And salicylic acid is actually uh, used in, in clinical trials uh, for treatment of type 2 diabetes. So um, we know there are several uh, um, targets of, of uh, animal targets for aspirin, like COX enzyme and, and uh, icavabutinase. Recently, people found that salicylic acid can also activate this enzyme called uh, MPK kinase, which is, is a, a important enzyme involved in lipid metabolism. But according to my literature, literature search that they found uh, these uh, targets cannot explain all the, the, the medicinal effects of aspirin and, or salicylic acid. So, so our work uh, on salicylic acid in plants may uh, help uh, researchers in animal fields to identify additional uh, targets uh, to, uh, to further develop this drug. So before I stop, I would like to thank all the people who contributed to uh, my career so far. Uh, my, as I said, my advisor, uh, Robert Rong, he's a, my PhD advisor, Fred Alcibel, my postdoctoral advisor, who, with whom I'm still collaborating. I learned so much from Fred. He's a great mentor. And I also would like to uh, acknowledge all my past and present lab members, my collaborators, and my funding source, USDA, NSF, NIH, and uh, recently Howard Hughes Medical Institute and Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you.